Hello and welcome to this week's live stream from the Veg Grab Podcast. Hope you're well. Hope you were having a great weekend. Last weekend before the big one, the four day weekend. Well, for most of us anyway, there's going to be some of you out there saying eh, every day's weekend. Well, lucky you. But for for many of us, this is the last one before the big weekend. I hope we will make in the most of it. Now, today I want to talk about garden photography. This is a bit of a different conversation, I know, but it's one I think that is going to be rather interesting because what I've noticed in all my time as a gardener, and a lot of people that I've spoken to who are also interested in gardening, or one of the other hobbies that they say is also photography. I've got into photography quite a few years ago and um, it's it's something I quite enjoy. So we'll get into that in just a moment. First of all, let's see if anybody is out there. And straight off, we've got Adrian out there saying hello to Richard and all. Good evening to you. Uh, Bally Silly and the Lotman Man is there saying good evening all. Good evening to you. Turbo Stream there saying good evening, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. Stuart Jackson saying evening, Richard and Veg Army. Are oh, we all enjoying the sunshine? Just need it to last a few more weeks. Lovely having a bit of sun, isn't it? Absolutely lovely. Last few days, just been glorious sunshine. It's been lovely. Uh, Muddy Boots is there saying evening all. Good evening to you. We've got Hargrave Gas saying evening everyone. Hope you've had a great week. Good evening to you. Scott Ambler is out there. Evening all. Good evening to you. Chef Scott as he's otherwise known. Anna Jones. Good evening gardeners. Good evening to you. Billy SBB. Hello everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, Digwell says this week we are learning how to say good evening everyone in Icelandic. Got Kervold Alia Saman. I've probably pronounced that completely wrong, but uh, we, we, we've tried. We've tried. Uh, Digra says every day's a weekend. <laughs> I knew there was going to be somebody that says that. Uh, Andrew Norris says evening one and all. Woke up to 10 centimeters of snow this morning. All gone now in Croatia. 10 centimeters of snow. That's amazing. Uh, Turbo Stream, every day is a weekend. <laughs> Another one. Absolutely, another one. Andrew says to dig well, Um, I'm guessing that's Croatian. I could be wrong, though. Uh, Rebecca says, good evening. Only just come in. What a day. Hope you've had a good day. Hope it's nothing uh, nothing too serious. Uh, Sean, hello, everyone from Dublin. Hello to Sean in Dublin. Welcome. Please do join in. Uh, Chili K, evening, everyone. What a beautiful weekend with moments of dreary. It's been a lovely few days. It really has. It lifts the spirits, doesn't it, when we get a bit of sunshine. Uh, Digwell's there saying, oh, God, I, they're going off on their own conversation. My dad is there saying good evening. Good evening, Dad. Hope you are well. So tonight's topic, um, as we get into it, what I want everyone to know is just let me know what type of camera you use. I don't need to know all the specific details, just whether it's a smartphone, a point and shoot, a uh, mirrorless, a DSLR, or perhaps you don't take any photos at all. Just let us know that as we get talking. So I've done, I, 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 I have had, or oh, for over the years, I've had many, many cameras. And I started quite young with the old film that you wind up, point and shoot cameras. But about, and I've had digital point and shoot cameras as well when they first came out. They're sort of three megapixel size, which were tiny. I remember reading at the time people saying that three megapixels is all you really need, but they were, they were tiny. But about 12 years ago, I bought my first what I call big camera. It was a mirrorless camera. I still use it to this day, actually. And I went and done a day's course at a photography place. I've got to admit, the course I didn't, I came out feeling very, very um, confident, much more confident with my cameras. But the trouble I have with a lot of these things, including photography stuff, they all say words like you know what they mean. They'll say something, they'll look at your photo and say, oh, it's overexposed or it's muddy and things like that, like they know, like you know what that means. And this is one of my big bears. So hopefully something we're going to get into. 
Anyway, yeah, I did this photography course, came out much more confident, learned a bit more, and it got me out of the automatic mode. But since then, I've never really been happy with my photos. But what I've learned is it's about taking as many photos as possible. Last September, I signed up to join my local photography club. It was actually as a way of getting my brother into it because my brother's in, really into his photography and he takes some really good photos, but he has been winning a lot of competitions as well. And it's just purely he has a time. That's how he's got good at it. Uh, he, my brother doesn't have much of a social life. I'll put it like that. So it was a way of getting him out. But I went to this photography club. I'm still going to every Wednesday. Um, and the tr one of the, I, I want to say trouble, it's not what I mean, but it's very much, I'm, well, my brother's the youngest person, followed by me, it's very much a, a retiree club, which I think is a shame, but we've learned more and more from doing this. We've looked, we take part in the competitions, we have a look and we learn in stuff. There's still a lot of talk, like you know what you're doing, but we are learning a lot more from just watching and seeing what everyone else is doing and all these photos that are taken. Um, so let's quickly go to the comments and we'll get into it. So Rebecca is there saying, no, I mean, what a lovely day slash plenty of gardening done. Absolutely. It's beautiful, isn't it? Sun's still shining out there today. and. Um, yeah, it's it's good sun. I'm glad I'm glad there was nothing wrong. I'm, uh, I'm glad you had a good day. Graham says evening all. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. We're talking about photography tonight. Chili Kate says I went to my first flower and vegetable show this weekend. Crikey, that is very early, isn't it, for a flower and vegetable show? Were they just sort of selling seeds or something? Was this one? Did you tell me about this? Or did I forget? Uh, Steve says, hi, good evening, Steve. Welcome. I believe you're into your photography as well, so perhaps you have something to, to discuss. Stuart Jackson says, I use my smartphone for everyday use, but I do have an SLR for days out and holidays. Trouble is, I cannot edit very well. I hear you, I hear you. Editing is something we might touch upon this week. Digwell says, mirrorless DSLR. Yep, absolutely. Um, has his chosen camera. Uh Muddy Witch has still got 35mm, 120mm roll film, a few DSLRs digital, but mainly use my phone now due to convenience. And not having to carry heavy weights around, phones can produce some good images now. Uh, so, yes, uh, let's go for the comments and I'll come back to that in a moment. Anne Wright has joined. Hello, veg growers. Philip Hodds positive as plaster came off rest, so all systems to go from now. Congratulations. Also belong to Camera Club, own a mirrorless camera, older bridge camera, but use phone camera every day. Uh, Digwell says smartphone too. Digwell says our local show was crikey, they're really early. But hey, um, perhaps it's just me. Andrew Norris says I just use an iPhone. Most of the pictures I take are just for a record of an event or plant or a source material for plain planting. I focus more on composition. Uh, and Steve says photos from my cheap phone aren't up to much. Okay for snapshots and record keeping. Can make decent by a lot of editing. I use my DSLR when I remember little or no editing required. He goes on to say, mind you, I always have my phone with me. So, yeah, the phone photography. This is, uh, you know, I've got my, my phone right here, the old iPhone. They pretty much have eliminated the old point and shoot cameras. They're really damn good. The cameras on them are really, really good. It has to be said. Netflix now allows films shot on iPhones on their, um, on their um, what do you call it, on their network. Um, so it's all, phone iPhone cameras are, I've got to say, absolutely brilliant. You know, I don't use my phone camera that much for what I call my proper photos. I tend to use this camera here, which is a mirrorless DSR. Um, I don't know why. I used to use it a lot. I, I just prefer to use a big camera because I can adjust all the functions quite easily. Trying to use a phone, trying to edit on a phone, I don't know how people do as well, I'll be honest, but that could just be me. I am learning because I'm finding using the phone to be much, much more efficient. Um, but yeah, I mostly shoot on photos on this mirrorless DSLR, which is a Sony A7 if you are interested. 
I take a few on my on my camera, but not many. Now, this is interesting. The last week, or was it the week before, one of the two, was at my camera club. And there was a competition. I think it was wildlife. And the person who won actually took one with a photo he took. He was of a crab on a beach. And he literally did took it on his camera. He said he was walking along. He saw it. He got his cam phone out like that, put it down, took the photo and edited it. And it won. It was a brilliant photo, I have to say. So when it comes to camera phones, they are damn good quality. They really, really are. Um, so I... I'm not I'm not a photography snob. If you use your your camera phone, absolutely fine. I'm not gonna say anything against it. Um but I do prefer my mirrorless DSLR just because I like I I like it. it the, having this the uh, monitor the eyepiece forces you to get your eye up and things like that. Anyway, let's um let's go back to the comments quickly. Chili Kate says the show was three aisles of spring flowers, of course, spring bulbs and stuff. One aisle of veg and one aisle of bacon and handicrafts. There's another in July. That's not a bad idea, I've got to say. Um, at least it keeps the gardening alive in the quieter months. Uh, Digra says, any later plus spring shows and the daffodils would be dead. Good point. Yeah, as I said, it, it, it does encourage people to grow all year round as well, doesn't it? Uh, Chili K, oh, and a photography category, of course. A high grade gas. I have film and digital SLRs, but I haven't used them in ages. Use the iPhone for everything. Oh, excellent. Uh, Turbo Stream. I'm sorry, I meant to send in photos for this week, but I forgot. My head hasn't been in a good place since my AE visit. I found out today I probably have anxiety. It all makes sense now. But I hope you are okay. Um, sorry to hear about all that, but you know where we are. Rob's a lot of garden. Good evening, all. Good evening to you. Steve says, I once had a Nexus One phone, great camera, which was at times equal to the DSLR, but phone died and bought cheap phones ever since, which can't cope well with slow sun or very bright days. Thing is, again, I'm going to come back to this camera photography thing. Um, at the photography show, there was people who were selling sort of lenses and, and covers to try and get some more... Um, better quality out of your phone and i've even seen like rigs that you can add lights and flashes too so lots of things to do on the camera uh on the phone on the phone camera and brilliant day on the plot today so i'm fine this is tyro stream money boots lots of apps for phones to adjust depth of field ev color balance shutter speed and iso absolutely and this is this is the thing i uh, I, as I said, if I want to adjust all that stuff on this camera, I just have to twist one of the several knobs on, on this, which is what I like about it. But there are apps that really do adjust and make your your, your phone a very, very high quality. And again, uh, we all carry the camera phone with and with us these days. I mean, I'd, I'd be lost without my camera phone, I'll be honest. Uh, and right, I too have one at Camera Club with phone pics. It does cause a stir doesn't it just doesn't it just there was um, there was somebody who won camera competitions with ai um not out mars but in in uh big camera competitions it just scary how far it's going better has joined good evening to you uh turbo stream says i use a nikon d33 for my landscape photography and my smartphone for the allotment photo is it's always in my pocket i've just bought the dji pocket 2 this week to hopefully film a few plot tours good good camera that the dji pocket 2 i've got one myself uh well have we got anything else um okay so we've spoken a bit about all these things now i was going to do a huge sort of speak and and things like that on how we could get the most out of our cameras and this is what i want to try to get through tonight getting the most out of our cameras but digwell rather kindly sent me over a video which i'm going to play now which pretty much does everything that we need to do okay then so one thing you can do without any knowledge whatsoever of camera settings is composition you can create an aesthetically pleasing image by following something called the rule of thirds this image is divided up into thirds, horizontally and vertically. 
the horizon fits on one third horizontally and the tree fits on another third vertically. Much the same in this one, the dude on the rock is on one third and the horizon is basically on the other third. So the aim is to get your subject or your point of interest on one of the third lines. And you'll probably agree that those two images would be quite boring if they were sat dead centre. But as with anything, rules are made to be broken, so it's, it's not a hard and fast rule. It does make for a more pleasing image though. Okay, then onto the three basic camera settings that you can change to affect your photo. First off is aperture. This affects the brightness and the depth of field, basically how much is in focus. ISO, or the film speed, affects the brightness and the graininess of the photograph. And lastly, we have the shutter speed, and this also affects the brightness, but it also changes how blurry the picture is. All three of these affect the brightness of the photograph, so we've got a few things we can play with. Brightness is also called the exposure. If we change the aperture on the lens, we can control how much of the picture is in focus. With the opening closed right up at f32, the whole photograph's in focus, but when it's wide open at f2, f1.4, we can be selective of what we choose to focus. So basically, the more light, the less focus. This is why certain sunglasses are banned in cars, and why you can't have your windscreen tinted. Your apertures are wide open, and your focus is reduced. If we change the shutter speed, we can control how blurry the subject is. The faster it is, the sharper the subject, the slower it is, the more camera shake you get, and the more blurry the subject is. This can be intentional, mind. And if we change the ISO setting or the film speed, we can control how grainy the photo is. The lower the number, the more light you need. The higher the number, the less light you need. But the sacrifice is image quality. And don't forget, this is no way meant to be a complete tutorial on photography. So basically, in auto mode, your camera brain senses what you're taking a picture of, and it will adjust the aperture, shutter speed, and the ISO setting to get the correct exposure. There will be a few modes that you can nudge the brain in the right direction, like sports mode or nighttime shooting, but we're not going to go into that right now. But what you can do with the phone or the camera is switch out of auto and go into one of the priority modes. And this one is um, aperture priority. So you found a nice scene on a hilltop and you want it all to be in focus, so you've selected f11. We're going to use ISO 200 for all of this. What the camera does now, it picks the right shutter speed for f11 to give the correct exposure. And hopefully you've got the photograph you want. If it didn't work, just change the aperture up one or down one. It's called bracketing. It's so easy to do these days, but so expensive in the old days with the film cameras. And the same sort of thing if you want to take a photograph of a daffodil with just one daffodil in focus. Pick a low F number and the camera works the rest out for you. And again, very similar in shutter priority mode. You pick the shutter speed, the camera does the rest. Little John is on his BMX bike, you want to catch him up in the air. Fast shutter speed, so he's frozen mid-air. The camera picks the aperture, job done. And now little John has changed the basketball, he's bouncing the ball up and down. You want the ball to be all blurry, slow shutter speed, aperture chosen for you, and there we are, decent photographs. Here we go then with just a few that I've taken and a little bit of explanation of what's what going through them. The sky was too bright here to see the rainbow properly, so I made it a little bit darker, and then I cropped it to obey the rule of the thirds. I took this photograph of the moon through the trees and I thought, well, those, those clouds look interesting, but I can't see them. So I made the photograph a bit lighter, a little bit more detail, lighter again. Changed the camera setting and there we have some nice wispy clouds. Don't be afraid to pose a subject. Contrasting colours in the background, always a good idea to make things stand out. This wasn't so much pose, but would have been a perfect shot if I had my phone out of my pocket 30 seconds earlier. The dents in the cloud matched the roofs perfectly. A boring old terrarium looks totally different from the top. Looking up. Looking up's always good. Completely different perspective on things. I had to lie on the ground to get this one in the woods. <laughs> Looking up at an old whaling gunboat down the Falklands. And my old Mustang. Cool.
good example of the rule of thirds in this one with the horizon and the trees on the right and aperture setting on this one nibbly monument in focus with the trees out of focus and a lovely little manor house in the valley framed by some bushes the light in the woods made the tree stump look interesting and it put a glisten on the fern wide aperture for this fungi with the background out of focus most phones and cameras have got a macro set in these days so get in there things look totally different close up hmm we all know what those eggs are don't we <laughs> and another pest stink bug shield bug and can you guess what this is no it's not a wormhole from star trek it's light shining through the back of a morning glory flower couple more examples of aperture priority this one is more in focus than this one so the background's totally out of focus and the same with his daffodils no excuse for missing things like this these days we've always got a phone in our pocket and most phones have got a panorama setting I love this one I call it where are you lot going so easy to edit these days the street light was in the way and the roofs were just poking through a little bit left so i had to erase those and there they are decent photograph and there's another one i took at the same time with a different setting and boring old cobwebs look even better when they're just cobwebs with no surroundings and most cameras and phones allow you to take photographs in grayscale these days or you can do it in post-production on your computer a totally different atmosphere in black and white in fact i think i prefer it well there you are guys hope this helps a few of you get the yeah, camera out take some photographs doesn't cost a penny these days well there you go thank you so much for that video digro pretty much done everything i'd written down uh, that I was going to talk about tonight, but he did it for me. So what I thought we'll do instead, you've seen I've got my camera set up here. We've got a bit of a, a setup behind here. We switch over to this camera. You can see we can start, we can play around and take some photos. So we're going to do that, change in a few settings and sort of keep it with the gardening theme. First of all, let's just quickly clear through the comments to make sure everyone's up to date. Uh, Moneybook says, all my YouTube videos are shot on the iPhone in 4K. Just goes to show just how good iPhones really are these days. Turbo Stream says, I did an amateur photography magazine course a few years back. To my amazement, I got 88%. My trouble I have with the course I did, it was a day course. It was very much like a lecture. They're telling you what you should know. What I wanted from a course, in all honesty, was that we go and take photos, we change settings, and we see how it affects. And this comes back to what Digwell said, go out and take photos. We can do that with digital. We ain't got to worry about printing them. We can just go and take as many photos as we like. Uh, Rob Solomon Garden says, I use my iPhone for photos and videos. Not very good at either. I'm sure that's not true. Um, again, it's all about practice, isn't it? Nigel, hello. How hope you are well. Even though I wasn't expecting this topic, trying to get some good picks of freshly grown produce is always fun and harder than it looks. Completely, completely agree. Uh, Nick has joined. Even in all, sorry for being late. Not a problem. Um, welcome along. Turbo Stream says, brilliant video, did grow indeed. Uh, Rob says, I've seen an old whaling ship. Uh, Bethan says, fab video, Steve. Um, Chili Gate says, that's really interesting. Thanks, Dig. Well, I really enjoyed helping Master Chili with his GCSE photography projects, but never understood it. And this is my exact problem that I have when it comes to many of the photography things I, I've done. They talk in a way as if you know what they're talking. Even the judges, they'll say, I'll, you pop a picture up and they say, something as simple as overexposed. You know, let's have a bit more. What 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 do you mean by overexposed? What can be done to counteract that? I know it's a very simple thing to lose in photography, but those who are beginners, they want to know how to stop that sort of thing from happening. You know, uh, Anne says, good explanation. Nigel says that was an excellent overview. Um, and Rebecca says, blimey, great video. 
I'm useless at taking videos. Rebecca, I know that's not true. I've seen some of your, your photos. They are very, very good. Uh, Alum and Cooks, hello. How are you doing, my friend? Don't be afraid to get yourself in oppositions. I did photography as part of my degree using 35 mil film and dark rooms. Phones are so much easier. All of my photos. Video and photography is now on the iPhone. I see. I must be pretty much the only person that does everything on my mirrorless. Then, but hey, I don't care because it's how I like. Um, Digress is best to find a course that gives critique on your te technique rather than dictating to you. Absolutely, one that encourages you to go take photos, even if it's as part of a group. Go and take photos, critique it all together, change some settings, and see how it affects. That's what I wanted from the course. And um, never really got it. Uh, Chili Cat says, you never get good explanations from teenagers. They just roll their eyes at you. Yeah, don't they just? Uh, Bethan says, my grandfather was useless at taking photos. He always missed people's faces. It was a family joke for years. Right. So, as I said, let's, um, let's go over to this camera. I've left it so you can see all the settings. Let's hope the battery lasts. Um, so I've set this sort well, I say I've set it up. This sort of area up to be a little bit of a, a, a photography area. So the first thing that we want to do is composition. And looking at this image, it's not level, is it? So we need to really, first of all, sort out the levels. Um, so we can straighten that up just by adjusting the tripod quite easily. Now I think. We bring it around to bring it around and lose the guitar a bit, like so. Now it looks on level again, so we're going to adjust that again. Oh, there we go. Right. So first of all, let's take a photo. This is on automatic mode. Nothing that I'm going to be doing differently or, or just let it the, the computer just let the fight the uh, camera do the work i press and hold and that's what the photo turned out like let's have a bring it up like so that's actually not too bad but i think composition wise it's a little bit busy what do you think let me know in the comments what you think or what you would change about the composition of this um I'll leave it up there while we, we 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 discuss. Turbo Stream says, I've always enjoyed the editing process of my photos. I did used to do it on my iMac, but I've recently found an app called Snapseed, so I do it on my tablet. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got uh, Lightroom, which I've discovered I can have on my computer and on my phone, so everything is uh, on the cloud, and it makes it a lot easier to adjust things. Um uh or i'll do the editing but one of my troubles i have if i'm not at my computer things don't get done and i spend a lot of time at work not on a computer obviously with my job um and what i would what i would want to do i'm sat on lunch i want to edit some videos or photos or something using it on cloud has made my life so much easier and says a great online course i'd recommend is a year with excuse me a year with my camera I'll have a look at that. And uh, Digwell says, zoom in to, lack, to lose the lack of interest at the sides. Yeah. So there we go. So let's let's zoom in a little. That was on 28 mil. So we've gone down to 35 mil there. What do you think of that? Is that any, is that any better? Let's see what anybody says. Nigel says, I use a small mirrorless with a good set of lenses, but being a compact, it doesn't have a viewfinder. Accurate manual focusing is much harder using the back screen. Yes, yes. Again, that's why I like my mirrorless, because it does have a view, a um, uh, um, eye viewfinder. It does have the back screen as well, but I, I much prefer that as well. Uh, Nigel says a photography club that I was a member had a theme subject competition once a month. A respected member from another photographic society would judge each picture with constructive criticism. That's kind of what we have, except it's every few, every couple of weeks almost. Um, 
but again, they still my my problem is that the judges still talk as if people know what they're doing. You get the odd one that does it in a way that explains it without sounding condescending. Uh, Tab Extreme says, when I worked at the printers, we used to scan the film positives. So learn the basics from these days. You can improve a badly exposed photo these days as the sensors are so good. Indeed, indeed. So do we should we take a shot of that and see how much better that is by being zoomed in? I think that does look a lot tidier myself. But what do you think? I'll bring that back up so you can see it. I think that looks a lot tidier myself, but what do you think? So Nigel says, change the camera angle and shoot from the side. We'll be able to show depth of field better. And a lot of cooks, I'll move the camera tripod to the right, looking more lengthways along that bench, slightly higher angle to get taller objects towards the back and smaller objects flat. So you, I'll switch to this camera quickly. Two of you are saying to sort of adjust the camera angle. So let's uh, let's see what we've got from there. Um, how does that look? How does that look? What do you think? What do you think? Let me know of that before I take a picture. Uh, Nigel says, track to the right, less bucket. Um, I learned a lot from the photos of probably the best landscape photographer called Joe Cornish. My landscape photos are much better these days. It's all about the composition. Um, yeah, I agree. It is all about composition. Uh, Ian Beddoes, I'm old school and get 24 prints on film. Uh, yeah, and uh, other end, old black bag. Um, right, sorry, sorry, I'm doing this from this direction. Uh, so you want me to get the camera? I think that'll need it's a bit tight in here, so we might need to zoom out a bit. That's as far as I can go. How about that? How about that? What do you think of that? Or does that need to be? I'll show you what I'm doing from this angle a bit more. Uh, this, this shed is so tiny sometimes, it's a bit of a struggle. Uh, but what do you think of that for a shot? Um, cut off the bucket and maybe slightly rearrange things. I was thinking that as well, but this is where we, uh, where I thought we can all get involved in this. So, what do you reckon? What should we what should we rearrange? One of the things that I'm told happens what with our photography club is that when there's writing in a picture, people tend to um, tend to, tend to try and read the writing. So we should shouldn't really have any wording in our photos, but that's easier said than done. Sometimes. Uh, right. If you need to get to the left, shift the taller objects to the other end furthest away. Right. So you want me to come further around to the left. Um, oh, further around to the left. I need probably it's as wide as I can go. I think you said something about coming up a bit as well, didn't you, earlier? So I'll bring that down to get an overhead view. What do you think of that? <laughs> uh, focus on haughty wall at the widest aperture. This is on automatic at the moment. We're, we're not going to fiddle around with aperture stuff. We're just focusing on composition at the moment. Um, Alarmant Cooks, my left, <laughs> my left. Uh, Jackson says, every day is a school day. I love learning new things. And Turbo Stream says, I've gone all dizzy. This isn't easy, trust me. Uh, lay the gloves flat. Next thing. I'm going to have to move this chair a, a, a bit more. Try and pull this out a bit. See if I can get any. Is that a bit better? And then lay the gloves flat. I like that. Uh, 
Like that? How's that? Nigel says, if you have software, know what you'll see doing. Shoot in RAW format, which creates an image with an enormous file size, but all the color and lighting data is stored separately. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I do RAW and JPEG anyways, but I've got a huge server to store my photos on, so size isn't a big a bit of a problem. Mind you, it's nearly... 10 terabytes is needed for that. I've got to add some more to it at some point. Uh, Digwell says, does it not have manual focus peaking that highlights the in-focus area? Um, uh, it probably does, but I've not... Again, I'm sticking with keeping it simple for everybody. Nigel says, with right software, an enormous amount of image correction manipulation can be done. Oh, my God, I need to get hands on. <laughs> I know this is not I, I'm sure this is not easy anyway the, the, do we think that's a better better image if we would take a photo of from that let's say and I'll bring it up so everyone can see uh, so I'll bring it up like that does that look like a better image what do you think and uh, I'll, I'll leave it like that. I think you get the idea with the composition. It's all about trying to make it look good and and what have you. Oh, I think I know what you're on about now. I'm bringing it from the left. Uh, let's try like that. No, that's not working. It's not working at all. Right, I haven't got the room. I haven't got the room. <laughs> Further back, more angled down, but you haven't got the space. I haven't got the space because I'm sat here doing this. So I'm going to go back to where we were, which was sort of like that. Bring it up a little. Make it a little higher and angle it down. So there we go. Composition wise, let's bring back up to this camera. As you can see, I'm squeezed in here to the edge to try and fit all this in, but I didn't quite think this was going to go this way. But hey, this is all good fun. Um, let's start fiddling around with some of the settings to see how it affects things, shall we? So back to this, I'm going to go into aperture priority mode. Uh, what have we got? What's that one? Oh, yeah, aperture priority mode. So this is f.8 with an ISO of 100. So uh, that ISO isn't too bad. Mate, right. And Nigel says, the bigger the focal length of a lens will blur the background without adjusting the aperture. Yes, so I am on AFC, automatic focus mode. Again, I'm trying to keep it simple for those who are not, who are doing it on a smartphone. Um, so what do we do? Well, it, we were just in the aperture, weren't we? So this is an F.8. Let me get rid of that comment because I can't see what I'm doing. Let's, let's scroll it down to, this one will only go down to 3.5. See how the image changed in that. So 3.5. That's what it looks like with 3.5. Now let's go all the way up the other end to 22. Now it's adjusted the shutter at the same time as doing that, I think. There we go. I'm going to bring that back. Because I've adjusted the aperture on that, it's adjusted the shutter speed, so it's taken it from being a quick snap to a long snap. And let's see what that one looks like with that. There we go. That's quite sharp, isn't it, the image? When I say sharp, everything needs... 
everything is in focus. Get the idea. Get the idea anyway. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it was a 10 seconds with the... Let's bring this back up. 10 seconds. For those that don't know about shutter speed, that's how long the, folk, the camera lens is open for. So 10 seconds shutter speed lets in more light, gets a sharper image. Um, so that was a 10, 10 second. It adjusted itself because it's on aperture priority. Muddy Boots says underexposed gone black and allotment cook said shift the potato to the left and open the gloves laid crossed over themselves if they are not attached. Um, and Nigel says try changing the colour balance. I was looking at that, the colour balance on that, and I do think it looks a little bit warm, doesn't it? Um, again, this isn't what we're trying to do today at the moment. We're just uh, we're just trying to take a we're just trying to experiment with a few photos and see what happens. Um, but yeah, under this light, it should be four two o o k. Uh, right. Where was it? Where was it? Um, let's go back. So I'll tell you what I usually do. I put my camera, let's get rid of that. I put my camera in complete manual mode. It's what I usually use. Uh, wrong button, sorry. Now, this is, so we're going to, you can see as I'm cycling through this, making the aperture bigger, now it's letting in more light. And that was done. Let me get rid of that comment as well. And that, that's because we had just opened, had it up to where we, we were quite a low setting. Uh, let's go for F8. I'm going to adjust the shutter sp speed a bit to, yeah, 10 seconds. You were right there, Digwell. I reckon, I reckon, hang on, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Let's go for that. That turned out not too bad. Uh, let's let's adjust that the shutter speed. Let's shut it right down to that's like one tenth of a second. Very dark because the shutter speed is is so low. Oh, wrong one. Um, we'll open the shutter speed up to much higher. We'll go for one second. Processing. And there we go. Right. There we go. 45 minutes in. We've taken a few snaps. We've adjusted the settings and what have you. Shall we quickly go to well, what what do you should we have a look at some of your photos quickly while we uh we have a bit of a think and, and gather our thoughts? So we've had a few photos come in this week, and a good collection, I have to say. So, first of all, Kate popped to the allotment to take some photos, but she forgot to take her son's DSLR camera. So she may do with her camera phone, which, as we've said, camera phones are perfectly adequate. You can adjust all these settings and things like that. Uh, and I love these, I've got to say. I don't know what veggie stitch markers are, something to do with knitting, but she was gifted these veggie stitch markers i'm assuming they mark where you are in your stitch patterns uh perhaps you could let me know what they actually do but i thought they look pretty damn cool uh i've got to say uh ian's humorous edition this week he always likes to add a bit of humor it's a pot plant looking at its older smaller pots saying it will never fit in those again i say that with a lot of my jeans at the moment i'm never fitting those again uh, Stuart's Garden is really springing into life, Stuart Jackson. This is plenty of colour and, excuse me, and plenty of um, uh, uh, life going on in there. Stephen's Onions, he's got them in. They are looking great up on his allotment. And uh, 
bed looks great. Everything looks great, doesn't it? To really start springing it into life. Hence why we are in spring. Scott has got his potatoes in, something I've managed to do myself this weekend as well. Potato season is upon us. I think the ground is hopefully dried out enough and going to stay dried out that our potatoes will grow. Uh, Bethan's flowers are full of colour. As you can see, yellows and reds all coming along there, looking fantastic. So please do keep sharing your photos. You can post them in our Facebook group, send to us via social media, or email me, richard, at vegetablepodcast.co.uk. And uh, we'll try and show them next week. Turbo Extreme says, I'm just about to have my first rhubarb crumble of 2024. Just saying, sorry, off topic, not a problem. Hope you've taken some photos to share with us. Money Roots says, not 0 0.8 of a second. That was the shutter speed, yeah. And Digwell says, a very basic rule is aperture priority for most photos unless there is movement involved. I tend to use manual more. I have to admit, I tend to use manual more, but that's because I like to adjust the ISO and everything else. Something I've learned, I've got, I've got to move this because this is hurting my back. Sorry. I know we spent all that time setting that, that up, but it's hurting my back. I need to move more over here. Uh, something we 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 something I've learned a lot lately is with the ISO setting, and Digwell hit on it. The higher the ISO setting, the more or the less quality it is. So we can keep a lower ISO, the better it is. ISO, um, it's kind of the camera making up for the lack of light, is as I understand it. Uh, yeah, anything I can do. Anything, anybody else got any better dig? I will get my words out. Anybody else got any better way of describing it? Let us know. Toby Stream says, I planted my potatoes today, finally got something in the ground. Excellent. Excellent. That's good to hear. Right, let's go back to taking these photos. Actually, I think that looks like a better shot composition wise what do you think i think that being higher up and on the front looks a little bit better i think the white balance does need a bit of an adjustment though so how do we do white balance change that uh where is it white balance uh What do I find? Oh, hang on. I hit that wrong there. Sorry. White balance. I reckon that should be because I know my lights here are at that 4 2 OK. That is what I'm going to set that as, as a white balance. And already you can see, let's take a photo of that. Already that looks much better in terms of colour, I think, anyway. I'll bring that back up so you can see. Uh, Allotment Cooks agree from old school 35mm camera. Wider apertures, the need, more need for tripods to avoid shake. Uh, somebody did mention uh, shakes, didn't it, didn't it, didn't it? Uh, I, I've, I've, I've lost it. I've lost it. Stuart Jackson says, sorry, Rich, how long does it take you to clean all your tools? A very, very long time. I look after my tools. Actually, it doesn't take me long. Bucket of sand with oil every time you finish. But I, I do try and look after them. <laughs> um, what have we got? Uh, where were we? Uh, agree with the old school 35 wide apertures. The more, yep. Yeah. Um, I've read that one. Money books. ISO is the sensitivity of the film, or as was was called ASA, and it will turn it was DIN. Um, yeah, yeah. And in turbo stream, I mostly use aperture priority on my DSLR. I need to slow down, but sometimes there are things, so, so many things to photograph. This is a trouble. Some, I mean. <laughs> If you've seen my Instagram and photos I've posted up last week, that was very much all the same setting and just taking a few photos and trying them all out. I've got some really good ones, especially of Roxy. Um, but 
I think, again, this is where I, I've learned is that the more you fiddle around with your settings, the quicker and better you get at taking these photos. So Ian Beno says, prefer to edit afterwards on PC. Yep, yep. And uh, Digwell says, you can get away with a smaller aperture and or faster speeds with a higher ISO. Indeed, indeed. So what what should we what should we change next what should we change next to this 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 photo nigel slater says playing with the color bounce when shooting produces can accentuate the color i.e the orange of the carrots or red or green of peppers etc etc yeah i always try and match the lights with the the white balance and then i would try and add a bit of green or about add a bit of orange in the uh in the um edit suite if i need to do that i don't really try to do that too much but yeah another basic rule is to keep faster than 1 60th of a second to avoid camera shake but again most cameras and phones have built in anti-shake these days yeah yeah agree agree we're getting very um very technical here aren't we we're getting very technical with these sort of descriptions on how to take photos but we really want to really want to focus more on garden photography and taking photos of plants and flowers i know digwell's picture um digwell's video earlier answered a lot of things trying different angles different um, backgrounds and things like that to really bunk out and push out the colors Stuart Jackson says, I think I'm going to do this, taking pictures of the same image to practice. I'm sure I could get better at taking photos. Inside of that, I'll get the children to do it for me at school. Stuart, do it yourself and then get the kids to do it for you as well. Um, it, the thing is, as, I've, as we've said, with digital cameras these days, we can just play around. We can go take a photo of some daffodils. We can experiment with it change the settings as we've just done and see how it affects the cameras or the image sorry uh digwell says i can 100 recommend this book the beginner's photography guide by dk i got it for my grandson for xmas flick through it liked it so much that i brought a copy for myself excellent and then nigel says point shoot eat repeat absolutely yeah go take your camera point it shoot it take as many adjust a few settings really get into it i hope I hope we've, we've still got plenty of time, so I'm not ending just yet, of course. But I hope that this show tonight is, I know we've inspired Stuart, but I hope it's given out all the others who uh, want to get more out of their camera to go out and take photos uh, using different things. I should really, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a, what, what, I'm going to put a video up. Let's do the mission. You sent me a mission last week. Let's put the mission video up quickly. Um, and I'll see if I can find some photos to show a few of the other things that I've done. Right, guys. Last week, you sent me the mission to build a home for wildlife. And I've built this, the Hedgehog House. Now, it is a bit Heath Robinson. It's made up of some materials that I had. Well, basically, I took apart my old quail cage. And as I was taking it apart, I realized that I had half the bits I actually needed to get this built. So it's not the prettiest looking thing. I've tried giving it a lick of paint, but the paint isn't sticking. But as an experiment, it will do and to get things started until we can move things along and make some more. So, pretty simple. It's just a box with an opening. The opening itself does need a tunnel. This tunnel actually extends on inside this is quite important because obviously it's an entrance for the hedgehogs to come in but also it means that if a fox does stick its head in to try and get the hedgehogs hedgehogs can be over here and the foxes can't get to them that's the general idea behind that it's just a very simple measure it is up above the ground slightly so i've got a little ramp there for the hedgehogs to go in and out and yeah it's built this is where we've seen the hedgehogs lying around running around so we're hoping that's going to encourage them to go inside and make their own. I've left some straw and some bits and leaves outside as well for the hedgehogs to take in themselves and build their own home. This probably is a bit too big for them, but I think there's a family of hedgehogs and I think they all might enjoy it. 
and I think in the future we're going to be building more of these this is just as an experiment or to get the ball rolling to see what we can learn as I said the main problem I think one it looks a little bit rough but two it's a bit big but what we'll do we'll set the camera up and see if hedgehogs actually use it I think that's mission accomplished back to the studio That was a great mission, I've got to say, for this week. It's great that I've used up my old quail cage as well. Saves me burning more, more wood um, or having it lying around until the winter anyway. So very, very glad for that. It's not the finished article. It's a prototype to learn from so that we can build bigger, or not bigger, sorry, build better hedgehog houses in the future. Of course, this is the point of a show where I need to ask you to set me a mission or a challenge for next week. You know, I love these missions, these challenges. It would be a lot of fun. On that note, a few bits of housework to take care of. First of all, don't forget to like, don't forget to follow, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click the notifications so that you know when we go live. I know we go live six o'clock every Sunday, so it's pretty easy to, to remember that. But um, I want, um, you, I'm still, if I don't say it, I get told off by YouTube and Facebook for not saying it, basically. Uh, next thing I need to say, next Sunday, it, it, the clocks go forward, spring forward. So although it still be six o'clock here in the summer, British summertime, if you are watching across the pond or anywhere else, clocks, we may be an hour later, or is it an hour later or an hour, hour earlier? One of the two. Basically, find out what the time is in, in, in Britain and go from there. Um, and one final thing to say, I don't think anybody is actually watching in the Facebook group tonight. But if you do watch in the Facebook group, from April the 22nd, Facebook is banning the use of third-party apps. So we, 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 we may have to adjust things to be able to go live in the Facebook group. We've still got a Facebook page and YouTube that you can still watch on, and we might go on Instagram at the same time if I can get it figured out. Um, just a bit of home, homework, to, uh, housekeeping to take care of. Now, uh, back to the comments quickly. Alorman Cook says, definitely getting down to the level of the plants to see where natural light is. Composition with a black ground, if further away, work in thirds, avoid horizons of halves all about composition all about composition which i i think the composition side of or the composition aspect of our photos is the 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 major thing that we need to get through if we can compose our photos that's half of the battle uh nigel an old school rule for using camera support was one focal length of lens eg 50 mil lens equals 1 50th shutter speed yeah, it's still very much that same sort of thing. As I said, shutter speed is how long the lens is open for, how long it takes a picture. So if it's down at 1 25th of a second, it'll take a photo for 1 25th of a second. If it's for 20 seconds, it will take a photo of 20 seconds. So if you're trying to get that sort of, if you're trying to get the waves that you just want to see the wave crashing, you have it on a short shutter speed, but if you want to have the waves looking almost like a steel pond, that sort of white, wispy flow to it, you have it open for a bit longer. Um, I guess that's the way to describe it. Idaho says, hello, Richard, and everyone in the chat. Hello, Idaho. Lovely to see you. Hope you are well. Uh, Rebecca says it looks amazing. Um, Idaho says, well, we don't have hedgehogs over here, but that looks like a, a nice shelter. Thank you, thank you. I think it's because I, I know I'm making it out of scrap wood. I feel it could be better, but thank you. Both uh, everyone is Anna Jane says it looks fantastic as well. Thank you. Uh, Anne says using your phone daily to focus on composition is a good way of practicing without having to worry about settings. Got a tip from Mike Brown photography teacher on YouTube. Good, yeah, just taking as many photos as possible. Uh, Nigel says, do you still have your chickens? Yes, we got two more chickens a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're, there's 
for another week, we've got a competition to name one of the new chickens in which you could win tickets to Garner's World Spring Fair. Head to the vegetablepodcast.co.uk to find out more on that. But yeah, we've still got the chickens. Uh, they're in the garden still. Bethan says, great hedgehog house. Lovely job. Thank you. Uh, love the hedgehog home. We are very lucky they visit our garden every night. I've set up my wildlife camera up to take photos of it. Yeah, I've dug out my wildlife camera to do exactly the same. Got to get some photos of them, haven't we? Uh, Scott says, I love the hedgehog house. Do you have a nature camera set up? I will be putting it out there tonight. It will be out there when I finish this show. Uh, Alum and Cook says, challenge micro photography. Yeah, could do that. If everybody agrees with that, I could do a micro photography. For those that don't know what micro photography of is, it's basically close up. So if you want to get a bee on a flower, that would be a micro photography photo. Really nice and close. Not easy to do if it's if it's something like a bee on a flower, but it's an idea. I could do a few. Toby Extreme says, I think the message is to experiment with your composition with digital is no cost, just delete the bad ones and keep going. I agree. I agree. I think that is the key thing. Just keep taking photos. Again, when I did, I'll just mess my hair up. Um, <laughs> and when I did this photography course, something that the guy said is you need to be practicing your photography. I mean, it is all about it, isn't it? Practicing. He said an hour a day. I mean, who really has that much time? But the the point is there. Practice, practice, and practice. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, I will practice with my picture taken and start posts on Instagram then, so again, so you can compare it with old pictures from last year. Yeah, please do. Please do. It's just practicing that composition, then practicing fiddling around with your aperture, which is how wide the lens is, how wide that opening is. I'm trying to think of a way I can describe this. I don't want to and condescending to those that know, but those that don't know. So if you think of the pupil of your eye, the black piece of your eye, that is an aperture. When it's bright, it's quite small because there's plenty of light, so it closes down. But when it's dark, that aperture opens up wide. Um, that's basically the same as an aperture on a camera. Shutter speed, how long the shutter is open for, how long it takes as a picture for. And ISO is... The lower the ISO, the better quality, but it's um, the sensitivity, I think it is called. Uh, Digwit says, I'm sure you mean macro, not micro, specialist equipment for micro photography. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Allotment, uh, she did say micro, but yes, macro is what I'm going to be doing. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh Ian Bellows, how do you get the bee to stay there while you change your settings? Good question. So this is a, a little tip that I learned from Camera Club. Now you could be you could set a, have a flower, set your camera up, and just sit there for hours waiting for that bee to be in place. So you set it up before the bee gets there. But what, <coughs> excuse me, what somebody at my camera club does is that he buys in these sort of replica bees. They're tiny little things. You have to cut away. They come from South Africa or something. You cut away at the, the packaging so you don't damage the legs or anything. And then you pop that on your flower and you take a photo of that. So basically you're not really getting a picture of a bee. You're putting a bee there, if you like, a, a copy of a bee. Um, apparently, that's one of the, the tricks that a lot of wildlife photographers would do for that perfect shot of that bee. What they then do is, um, oh, what's it called? It's like a rail, a focus rail. So you, you set your focus up to be right on one part of the bee and then you adjust this focus rail take another picture and so on and then you go into your editing software and they put all these pictures of everything together to get the sharpest image possible basically that's how you do it uh digwell says super glue with a joke to get that bee in the same place uh, nigel says fake bees yeah this is it um 
uh, fake bees. Love and Cooks Micro. You can get specific lenses to do micro even for phones. I have to send you my image of bugs inside a daffodil or ladybirds inside a tulip. Please do send those in. I think I'm going to have to do macro, not not uh, micro, because um, don't have all, all the stuff for it. <laughs> Jenny Phil says that's cheating. We need real bees. We do need real bees, but. Um, when you're taking a photo, you cannot get the bee to be in exactly the same place. And on that note, Bumblebee Adventure. Uh, <laughs> perfect timing. Absolutely perfect timing. Dobby Stream says that explanation was the bee's knees. Yeah. Um, make a noise like pollen to attract the bees. And Tigwell says, am I not AI manual intelligence? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's a good laugh, isn't it? Are you going to show Kate Middleton how to do editing? Oh, that's such a bad argument, wasn't it? You know, good on her for giving it a try, is all I say. I mean, I, I've not seen the image, so I don't, I don't care. Uh, micro is bacterial level, macro is visible by the naked eye. Yeah, uh, there you go. It does turn you into a bee stalker, says a lot of cooks, trying to get that bee on that daffodil. I do. I do can see that it turns you into a bee stalker. But I can also see it being a lot of time spent waiting for it. Uh, I think one of the talks I've seen, somebody says that basically they spent weeks watching or days watching this flower and to see where the bee comes in and where it goes to take that photo at certain times of the day and then set it up for that. So it's a bit of a, a bit tricky, isn't it, when it comes to trying to photograph. I mean, it's the same as any wildlife photo. You are literally just going to grab that photo when you see it. It's just not always possible for it to be exactly where your camera is so you try taking a fox try taking a picture of roxy down, running down the garden it's almost impossible um unless you train her but you can get there in the end nigel says at the right time of year when the bees are in perfusion then try that there is that there is that but you still got to just make sure they get on that right place uh micro is 20 times minimum yeah 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 uh, you can always wait until there are hundreds of bees on the flowers. I think that's exactly what Nigel said as well. Completely agree. Digwell says, beat me to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Chinny Phil says, I've got some macro bee photos with real bees. I'll try and find them and share them in the group. Please do. Please do. We can use these for next week for the mission as well. So, yeah. Um, lots of great ideas. Lots of great ideas. But apparently that is how... Many photographers do the bee photography by getting these sort of fake bees and putting them in the position. Now, we do have another couple of photos to go through. It is your photos of your harvests. I think only Bethan has sent the photos in this week, which is great. Um, but we can always do with more photos of the food that you've harvested this week. So Bethan's haul is all this. There's lettuce, there's potato. How on earth are you getting potatoes at this time of year? Tomatoes uh, from your hydroponics, I'm guessing. Broccoli, purple sprouted broccoli, um, spinach, spring onions, parsnips, swede, and looks like some sort of mustard as well. And here's a close up of the root vegetables. There's uh, parsnips, carrots, swede, pan. Or was it celeriac? Sorry. Um, looks more like celeriac now. I had to double check. Fantastic. So please do. Um, Please do keep sending your photos of your harvests. We love to see them. And it's even better if I can spell words correctly. Hey, hey, we live and learn, don't we? Uh, Digwell says there was a bee in a flower image in my video. There was. Yes, there was. I do remember seeing that. Again, makes you wonder um, how you how they took that photo. Was it just luck or did they set it up? That's the question. Uh, Bethan's Kitchen and Garden. The potatoes are from were from pots from last year that I over, excuse me, that I overwintered. Fantastic. That's great. Um, this is what I love, isn't it? When people say we're going into the hungry gap, and there you are, 
oh hiccups as well um able to harvest food that you you've overwintered yeah. it's no reason we need to go hungry in this world cool. oh hiccups again i will sort that out in just a second um right i've got one more video to show you this is the so along for this week the, the photo seems to take up quite a long time this week so uh let's let's throw this photo in and um this photo this so along and this week it was cauliflowers right this week's so along as i said last week is going to be cauliflower now cauliflower is one of the vegetables that i think is one of the hardest to actually grow Partly because it tends to bolt a lot during the summer and there's a lot of lot of setting up to get them involved. But let's start at the beginning. First of all, we need a variety of cauliflower that is suitable for growing. Of course, there's so many different varieties. It's important to take into account when you expect them to harvest. So if we're sowing now, these could be summer slash autumn varieties. I personally, I'm sowing these seeds as you can see they're pretty small they are a variety called all year round so these can pretty much be sown all year round i wouldn't say they're the best tasting but this certainly makes it easy rather than having lots of different varieties but i certainly think getting the right variety is a key thing in the beginning igloo is a good example of a winter crop a winter cauliflower many others like that so we've chosen the seed variety and what we're going to now do is sow the seed. So come down here and I'll show you what we're doing. Now what I've got is one of these little green containers. These hold about 20 of these plug plants and I'm doing that up for a very good reason is that I don't want to have loads and loads of cauliflowers in the future. I just want to have enough to see me through. I recommend successionally sowing cauliflowers. You probably don't need more than four at one time, but of course you don't want all four of those to come in at exactly the same time, or all 20 for example. So you want some now, you want some in a few weeks time, and so on, just so you can spread those out. Now to sow, we're gonna take our dibber and dib a hole about one centimetre deep on each plug plant. One centimetre is about right. They're not a huge seed. They're, they're fairly small seed, but um, one centimetre is about right. And then we're gonna drop a single seed into each little plug plant. That should be enough to get them up and growing. And these aren't gonna need any heat to get started. I'm gonna place these in my greenhouse where they are protected, but they're just gonna start off in there. And hopefully within two weeks, we should see germination. And couple to four weeks after that, we can look at planting them out depending on how strong they are growing. I'm gonna leave them in the plug plants until we actually plant them out because I find that that's all they really need. Now, while we're waiting to plant them out, we're gonna prepare our beds. Make sure it's all weed free. Don't bother adding any compost or manure, but one thing you do need to add is organic lime, garden lime. Plenty of that just to adjust the pH. Probably my most important thing to add to any brassica beds. After that, a bit of grow more fertilizer, chicken manure pellets, just to add some feed into them. Then when we plant them out, we just take each one, plant them out, give them about 30 centimeters of space between each plant, and that should be enough for them to grow. Keep them well moist at all times and keep them well fed and weed free. Now in the middle of summer they have a tendency to bolt and because of course we want the cauliflower heads that can be a bit of a problem because it, it basically go into seed. This is caused by heat so it's important that you make sure the ground is cool and moist at all times. But another thing to do is shade out the actual cauliflower itself. Some people actually twist over the leaves to try and shade out the cauliflower or you might want to put a structure up with a bit of shade cloth, a bit of netting to reduce the chance of it bolting. Fairly easy to do if a bit complicated to set up but it's all about trying to keep those cauliflowers cool. 
Other than that, the only other problem that we might get is pigeons, of course, that might come along and eat your brassicas. I highly recommend Grazer's G1. Spray that on when they're young, and that just helps deter any pigeons that might take a fancy to your plants. As easy as that to get them going and get them growing. And then, of course, lots of recipes you can do with cauliflower once they are ready to harvest. Cauliflower cheese, of course, being the prime example. There we go. Give it a try. Let me know how you get on with your cauliflowers. If you are interested to know, our uh, last week we sowed the Summer Squash F1. They are looking great. They are growing very, very well. We also have got some cabbages that we sown a couple of weeks ago, which have germinated. We've got some leeks, which are also sowing or germinating quite well as well. And then outside, we've got some peas, which are really starting to show signs of germination. Might have sewn them a little bit too thick, but we don't worry about that. Right, back to the studio. Indeed, back to the studio. So yes, we have sown this week cauliflowers. Hope you're all going to go and sow some cauliflowers as well. Now next week we are sowing what is going to be the seed of the month for April in work premier in uh collab in collaboration with premier seeds direct but i'm doing it a little bit early on the live stream this week next week because it's easter sunday of course and the the reason for that is the seed that i'm sowing as the seed of a month for uh, april is called a dragon's egg kind of goes with easter doesn't it it's a cucumber but uh it produces dragon's eggs which i'm really looking forward to seeing how they pan out. So that's the seed we're going to be sowing next week in this sow along, as well as April's seed of the month. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, if you are interested, Premier Seeds Direct, VegPod 10 for 10% 10 discount. Go check them out. Highly recommend it. I'm not sponsored or anything by them. I've just got that discount code for you to use. Uh, right. Well, what was I going to say? Um, my mind's gone blank after all that. Uh, let's go through the comments because there was a few coming in during that uh, time. Um, Nigel says, now I've retired from my six day a week job, I've been able to dig the beds over two months earlier than usual and started sowing some seeds. Fantastic, fantastic. And congratulations on, on retiring. Uh, I'm quite jealous of you, to be honest, for being able to retire. Cannot wait to do it myself, but... Fingers crossed it will happen in the future. Uh, Bumblebee Adventure says, Reminesco cauliflower is good for Instagram. Yeah, that beautiful looking, um, unusual looking cauliflower, isn't it? They, they do look good on camera. Now, this is actually quite, that's a very good point, actually, because uh, we are talking about garden photography tonight. And I think we, we've gone down the route of trying to make our photos good which is great. I think that's what a lot of people want to know. But we've talked about composition and perhaps growing some plants that are good looking for camera. Composing them correctly might be something to think about as well. Romanesco cauliflower is a good example. The yellow, red and white colours of the chard as well is another one. Peppermint chard is another thing as well. Even watermelon or something like that that looks good on camera with those different colours bouncing all over the place. Hello, Roxy. Uh, Digwell says, the bee in the flower was ISO 50. That's low. That's very low, isn't it? No, it the lower you can get it, the better. Uh, shutter of 158 of a... 586th of a second. That's tiny. Aperture 2.4 and a focal length of 8 millimetres. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's... Goes to show. Uh, Stream said, I managed to track down a small box of garden lime this week too. I only just found some myself. Was it this week or last week? One of the two. It seemed really difficult to track down garden lime. Unless it was stupidly expensive. I don't know what's happened, but it just seemed to cost a lot. Alarm and Cooks says, cabbages are beautiful. They are, aren't they? This is, this is might be something that we can, we can, finish off tonight's show we've got about 10 minutes left but we can finish off tonight with what plants do you like to take photos of what vegetables do you think 
looks great on camera. So let, let's finish that off for the last 10 minutes. Cabbages are a great example. And actually, I have to agree, if you get the big cabbages, especially when they're growing along in a row, um, in that, that good-looking allotment, they just do seem to fit in quite nicely. So I agree, cabbages are beautiful. Uh, I, as I said, the chard, I always think, looks um, looks great. Um, she, Lauren Cooks goes on saying, I'm a nightmare. That root, can you leave that plastic bag alone? Sorry, the dogs came in through the dog flap. Come here. People want to say hello. Uh, I'm a net mouth. I often leave them too long because they're so pretty. Talking about um, cabbages, I agree. Digra says tomatoes. I think tomatoes look good both on the vine, but also in a bowl with a bit of water splashed over them as well, or something like that in a salad bowl. I think they look fantastic too um money with chilies and peppers are great on camera agreed agreed especially the 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 chili plant just dripping with chilies um again composing it so it has a neat nice background and things like that helps too as well um onion ropes yes onion after harvesting tied up in ropes hanging up looks fantastic as well uh Anna says beetroot choy ch ch yoga. I can never pronounce that one, but I agree. Yeah, that, that's the one that's got the, the purple and white rings. They also look absolutely stunning on camera as well. Um, has my camera dropped? Looks like my camera has dropped slightly. I'm just, just looking at it. Um, Bumblebee adventure strawberries, never ending changes in berries, flowers, and leaves. Yeah. All look great as well, don't they? Uh, garlic plate plats also are a fantastic thing to have in your in your repertoire to take photos of too. Um, yeah, they look great hanging up, don't they? Uh, Stuart Jackson says strawberry take a good strawberries take a good picture. Also, the flower of the plant. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, Digwell says use glycerin instead of water to simulate water drops. Oops, another secret given away. Yeah, again, these I've, I've given away enough enough of the secrets as well, such as the uh, fake bees. But get, it, we're fine with that. Kioja, Kiojaya, Kioja, the, the, the how to pronounce it. Yeah, you know what my pronunciation, especially doing these lives, it, it, it takes me a while. Nigel says, Hessian sack makes an ideal backdrop for photographing har harvest veggies. Yes, yes. I meant to share a picture of that, actually, didn't I? Let me see if I can um, I know, I'll see if I can upload the picture that I was thinking of quickly. Uh, where is it? Um, add an overlay. Um, store. Da, 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 in the very very conversation uh actually, this was something i like to do where was it 13 there we go and which one is it quite that one i'll just quickly upload this to to show you what i'm talking about uh idaho says i like to take pictures of blackberries absolutely they look great as well chili cake says can i ask a question please i normally keep our delicate seedlings chilies etc in the house until may or so we've been monitoring our other heated conservatory at its lowest it's dropped to was eight so my my greenhouse is in exactly the same position chilies and peppers go dormant below 10 degrees c so overnight that's fine I might know in my unheated greenhouse, they will be fine. Chilies and pe peppers are pretty hardy. They're more hardy than we give them recognition, but they are, they, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Um, at what point am I saying? We won't pull the tomatoes in just yet or any squash plants, but chilies and peppers will be fine at that sort of temperature. So let's see if that picture, there we go. Um, how can I do this? So this is the a picture talking of Hessian sacks. And I took this just before Christmas. It was a night where we were doing um, um, light 
playing with lights. So this was an eight second shutter speed on a tripod, of, of course. Eight f point eight, I think it was. Um, aperture of eight, ISO one hundred, and all we did was it was in a a pitch black room and we all had little torches and while that eight seconds that that camera was taking a photo we were just flashing the light all the way around all these images to get that quality light but the hessian sack that was mentioned you can see how well that hessian sack just looks great at making up and setting up the composition of that that backdrop so there we go um there we go. Uh, Digwell says, oh, let me get rid of that. Sorry. Let me get rid of that image and come back to there. There we go. That camera's definitely dropping. I'm going to have to sort that out in a minute. Um, uh, yeah, Digwell says, put a fan heater with a thermostat set at 10 degrees C. Yep. Um, you want to keep those chil chilies and peppers anyway above 10 degrees C. Not too worried about overnight temperatures just yet but as long as during the day it's above 10 degrees c we've got nearly 30 degrees c in my greenhouse at times no heating in that either digwell says still life yeah that is a kind of a still life photography thing again it was eight seconds but using a flashlight to really concentrate that to that to work uh a lot of cooks got to go my darlings next week bud we're going to be out of here in a few minutes anyway but lovely to see you thank you so much um for joining us anybody else got any other thoughts or questions they want to add to, about this very subject or the um, photography garden photography I, I wasn't sure how this was going to go down tonight what we're going to talk about next week next week i'm going to go back to proper gardening shall we say i want to know what herbs you're going to be growing in your garden and why and where a bit of a a big hard topic to to, to decipher i'm sure a bit, bit of a why topic but i'm sure we can work it out amongst ourselves what was it? i just soon got a bruiser on the camera um subject for next week literally great minds think alike um Re rebecca says thank you and good night oh uh yeah subject for next week we're herbs what herbs are you growing what are you using the herbs for where are you growing them companion planting that sort of thing lots of um lots of subjects to talk about in in that grand scheme of things running off the back of our herb gun we're going to have an easter egg hunt next week as well don't forget that so keep your eye out for easter egg hunt for the easter eggs in the background we're going to hide them in our videos as well and things like that and some of our photos also we might hide some easter eggs in so easter egg hunt on it next week's the mission is to micro macro photography and then um what was the other one oh the dragon's egg cucumber uh yeah so a couple of minutes to go as we are starting to finish off digwell says if you look at the image icon on a of a photo on a pc right click it to scroll to properties it will tell you the camera phone settings look at them and see what to change good tip there just to finish off if you are on a pc you can right click and see the properties to see what it was set to the aperture the, the um, shutter speed the focal length and things like that um, information is there to use and again i come back to what we said earlier if you do want to improve your photos take lots of photos composition 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 not easy i struggle with it i'll be honest especially when you're out in the garden you have to work with what you have and i'm not one for spending hours editing to clip bits out and move things around i want to try and get the photos right in the first place so that's how i stand Right, guys, we are going to wrap up for this week. Um, again, next Sunday, we were going to talk about herbs. Um, hopefully, it will inspire you to grow some herbs and in, um, and what have you. Stuart Jackson says, thank you for a very informative live again. This is why this group is so good. Learn new things every week. See everyone again next week. I want you all to go and take photos of your – it's the 1st of April on – 
No, it's not. It's not the 1st of April this month. But I want you to all go and take some close-up photos of your plants and your seeds or anything like that to send in next week using what we've spoken about this week for our photos. Right, guys, you take care. I'll see you again next week.